This is 6061 we're welding today. Oftentimes it's welded with 4043 filler metal. Not always. Sometimes it's welded with 5356. Sometimes other filler metals, but it depends on whether or not the part needs to be anodized. It depends on the strength requirements, whether or not it will be heat treated afterwards, things like that. So today, the job calls out for 4643 filler metal. And we'll talk a little bit about why. Let's get into the, let's get into the welding. This particular job calls for uh, a leak proof weld. It's going to be under pressure, so anything we can do to prevent porosity, like use this aluminum cleaner, is going to help. It's going to help get rid of those surface oxides, which can turn into porosity. You can see side by side here, quite a difference. It's good to have aluminum as clean as you possibly can. So, this is the joint. Uh, one end of it is a lot thicker and slips inside the other and it's, we're using 4643 filler metal on this job. That's what, the, that's what the customer calls out for because the job is probably going to be heat treated after welding. And 4043 won't really respond to heat treat after welding unless you get a lot of dilution uh, from the metal and we're not anticipating a whole lot with this joint configuration. So the 4643, it's got good properties, got just a little bit of magnesium added to the, uh, the alloying and uh, will help it respond to heat treat after the fact and bring the properties up to what the engineer decided this thing needed. Now Roy is using straight helium and tacking on DC and that's why he's getting little black sooty marks on the tacks, but that cleans up really easily. And the reason he's doing it is so that he gets good strong tacks that penetrate and won't pop loose so he won't lose dimensional tolerance while he's welding the thing. I'm going to be using this little imported 20 style, uh, 20 style water cooled torch here. And uh, I'm going to be using a gas lens today. Roy did not use a gas lens. He used a number 5 standard cup. I'm going to be using a number 6 gas lens just because my trial runs weren't working that great with a number 5. And so I decided to go with a gas lens so I can get a little longer stick out for, for filming the arc shot. I'll talk about the stick out here in just a minute. I'm using 2% lanthanated electrode with a sort of a blunt taper and I'm just going to let it ball kind of how, it's, how it wants to ball. And I'm going to use a roughly a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch stick out. And that's normally what I do because I like to see the tip of the electrode without having to cock my head sideways and get a crick in my neck while I'm welding. I, I, like, to, I like to keep a tight arc and the only way I can keep a tight arc is if I can see the tip of the electrode. We're doing a little light preheat here. We're using nothing but a handheld propane torch. And we're, we're going to drive off moisture and also preheat the part just a little bit up to about 150. And that's going to help prevent porosity because it's going to slow the cooling rate and get rid of any moisture that's, that's on the surface. You can see the number five standard cup there. Roy is letting that cleaning action of the arc work for a few seconds before he ever gets going here. Letting just a little bit of heat build up and then kick the foot pedal on the positioner on and get going. And you can see at this rate it's not going to take very long to make these welds. It's nice to have a positioner. Not everybody can afford one or justify one. Uh, I've had one for several years now and it's paid for itself many times over, but I take in a lot of side work. I got my AC balance set to 35% cleaning and that's the reason that the tip kind of rounded right up there. I don't have a taper anymore, but it, it starts nice with a taper. And again, I'm using a quarter to three eighths of an inch stick out. And that's mainly, like I said, because it's a lot easier to film the arc and puddle with a little bit longer stick out. Some people like the short stick out method where they'll, they'll have the electrode basically flush or maybe even up in the cup just a little bit to prevent contaminating the electrode and prevent any kind of risk of tungsten inclusion. But I just prefer to have a little bit of stick out. Different strokes, it's a, it's a personal preference thing. And isn't it nice to make a decent looking weld like that and then have, to have it machined off completely? <laughs> well, that's what happened on this part. All right, a good example of, of uh, what happens when you weld aluminum can be shown just by using a small strip of aluminum. Okay, I've got, I've got a couple of strips of 3003 aluminum. This is very common, what you would see on a truck box. Uh, diamond plate is typically 3003 H14. The H14 designates that it's been work hardened and then partially annealed so it can still be stamped and formed and broke and bend and rolled without cracking to a great extent. Also very weldable. 
Uh, not heat treatable though, you can't make it strong by heat treating it, but you can affect the strength of it and you, and you do affect the strength of any aluminum practically when you weld it because it's work hardened to an extent, which, mean, which means it's kind of stiff. It's been rolled through rollers and things like that. It's kind of stiff. So if I take a piece of this 3003 and I bend it, it bends with a fairly even radius. Same piece of 3003, same width and everything, but welded in the middle. What happens when I bend that? This bent, not with a nice even radius because the temper was the same the whole way. Look at this one. Why did it bend? Why did it kink right here? It's softer right in here. That's where the heat affected zone annealed this, this metal and, and took away the work hardening effect. And so this is the weakest point. There's a distinct difference there, wouldn't you say? So the bottom line is heat has an effect on metal, all metals. There's a heat affected zone when you use a fusion welding processes to weld any metal, there's going to be a heat affected zone. Whether or not the, the heat affected zone is serviceable or meets the requirements, the engineered requirements, that's, that's, another, that's another deal. It's a deep, deep subject and some of it is over my pay grade, but point is, know that when you weld aluminum, you're softening it up in the heat affected zone. And, and it's a time at temperature thing too. The longer you hang around, the higher you preheat, the slower you go, the more heat you put into the part, the bigger that heat affected zone is. So you can really affect the properties of aluminum by how fast you weld and filler metal you use and the preheat you use. That's, that's this week's uh, video on TIG welding aluminum. We'll see you next time.